Hello and welcome to this training. My name is Vicky Uzumba and today we will be looking at how we could build amazing websites step by step without any coding. And so I won't want to waste much of your time. So let's just jump into the course. Now the things we're going to look at, we're going to look at understanding the concepts of web development. We're going to meet WordPress. We'll be talking about the main name on hosting, the registration on hosting, and of course, what the meaning is and what web hosting is actually. Then we'll be talking about web news, blog creation, and lots more. Now, when we're done with all this, you could, or rather, you should be able to design almost any website at the end of the day. So, that is our hope. So, by the end of this tutorial, we'll see, after having the knowledge of all this, we're supposed to be able to at least design a beautiful and wonderful website. So now, understanding the concept of web development, if you are a web developer or probably you've had one or two training about developing a website or you've come in contact with probably somebody who is an ICT personnel, you might have come across these terms that are listed here. That is, knowing what a website is, knowing what a domain name is, knowing what web hosting is, then the purpose of a website, why actually, what is the need of websites, why do we design websites, and then how many websites, need, how websites are made, right? so, so now, let us start with the first one, what is a website, now from the definition of how it is that the website is a collection of web pages located under the domain name, this web page or pages, contain related contents in different forms and we'll talk about contents. Contents could be in textual form, that is text, then we'll have the visual or the audio. So practically, from this definition, it is telling us that the website is a collection, that is, it's like a class. Like when you come into a school, for instance, we have, let's say we're talking about a high school, we have chess, one, chess, two, then inside JS1, it is made up of different students. We have male, we have female, we have fair ones and dark ones. So that is the best example to give to a website. It is the collection of web pages, meaning that we've put text together and then we've put videos, images and audios, obviously, in, and we bring them all together. Now, when we collect all these pages together, they all collectively make up a website. So. That is the best way I think to go around this definition. You could also Google it up and see other people's ideas. So it's very good to understand the difference between a web page and a website. When we're talking about a web page, we are talking about a particular page inside the website. So like when I come into JS1 and I say I'm looking for the class monitor of JS1, I'm not asking for the whole class, I'm asking for just the particular class monitor. So that is the best reference I can give for differentiating a web page from a website. So website is a collection of web pages. So when you have one or two or more web pages and you bring them all together, <coughs> it gives you a website. Sorry about that. So now it brings us to the next question. What is a domain name? Now, a domain name is the name or address of a website. A domain name is primarily for identification and location process, but it can be used as business marketing or authority strategy, blah, blah, blah. Now, basically, there are a dozen websites out there. We have google.com, we have facebook.com, all those names you're mentioning, they are what they refer to as domain name. Normally, when we talk about the internet, the internet is just like turning your system on or probably having your hotspot turned on and having other people connected to you. It's already a network. Now, the internet has to do with having a lot of supercomputers. Those are computers that never go off, turned on and they're called servers. Then you're uploading your files to it and giving people access to it. Now, whenever you have a networking, probably via your phone hotspot you notice that everybody that is connected to your hotspot is giving an identifier a unique identifier which we call ip internet protocol an internet protocol is a series of numbers 
that differentiate that tells you the network you are on and then the particular device that is connected so if it is a router you could have 192.168.0.1 as the as the ip address of the router now 192.168.0 tells you that this is a particular router it's uh, it's synonymous with the uh, D link routers then dot one dot two dot three are the number of devices connected so it's the same thing we have in the internet every time a website is hosted that website is given an ip address and it's just like having a phone number when you meet your friends all your friends they have different phone numbers now you have your contact book your address book the reason why you have your address book is because you can't remember everybody's phone number like that of your wife your mom your sister your aunt your friends there is no way you could remember all their phone numbers so what you do is you set their phone numbers with something that will help you identify it and that is the, the contact name so that when 0703786 calls you you know that yes victor Uzumba is calling you because you set that number with his name victor Uzumba. so it's the same thing with url url or rather domain name like we have here, we have 216.58.23.238. This actually is an IP address. If you go to your address bar, you're connected to the internet and you type this in your address bar, it will actually load into a web page. Likewise, 157.240.1.35. These are IP addresses that are linked to a website. But then, who on earth because we have more than a billion websites so how then do you by heart know all these web addresses so if you want to go to facebook.com for instance you have to start typing all these numbers so that is the reason why we have the main name now whenever you type these ip addresses these corresponding websites are what that will load up so you see that domain name makes it easy to identify every website rather than trying to know the ip address of that website and then down here we have what actually a domain name looks like every domain starts with http or https which actually is the protocol uh, some call it prefix but actually it's a protocol it is what tells you on what protocol are you operating now whenever you go to a website and it has http it means that it is not very much secured it must be HTTPS. With HTTPS, then it means that it is secured. You can sec uh, you can securely conduct transactions, probably the ones that require your credit card and on or whatnot. So HTTP is a non-secure <coughs> website because the protocol is the HTTP stands for hypertext a uh, hypertext transfer protocol. So it means that it is not that very much secured and I won't very much advise you to give out your credit card details or any information on a website that is just HTTP. It should be HTTPS. Then we have www. A dot before, after the HTTPS, the column and the two forward slashes. We have a subdomain here. This place that www is, you could change it, you could have shop.google.com or any subdomain of your choice so now a subdomain is not actually the main domain it is actually a little a, a mini site or rather a mini domain within the main domain the main domain is this google and it has an extension of course also called top level domain it has an extension of .com we have a lot of extensions we have .com, .org, .ng all of them and dot com means dot commercial and then dot net means network and dot org means organization now it is always very very nice to name a website uh, to get a domain name according to the niche of a website for instance if i was building say a website to manage somebody's business i could have say rubanstore.com that would be a very wonderful domain name but then, if I was building a website for, say, a senator or probably a church, it's best to have something like senatoruchikunife.org or 
live stream or uh, live stream sorry or rather green pastures world outreach that org that will make more sense because it's a church it is not meant for buying and selling so dot com won't be very nice to be used there it will be better work as an organization or dot net meaning a network so that is that about a domain name just know that whenever you hear the domain name it means an identity an identifier to tell you which particular website you're going to rather than cramming the IP address of different websites. So I need to go to waste a lot of time in this video. So let's keep going ahead. Now what next do we have we have what is web hosting? Now web hosting is an internet service that allows you to store your website you already know what website is on a server and make it accessible over the world wide web that is www for those of us that don't know the phone of www today is your lucky day now a server is a supercomputer that is turned on 24 7 and it never goes off now like i was saying when we talk about web hosting web hosting is you've designed your website now we want to bring it to life we want it to be accessible to everybody over the internet during the course of this training or rather yeah, during the course of this training, I'll have to explain to you the different modes of web hosting. Normally, you could host your website. You could have a website hosted offline in the sense that you could have a system, just your computer. You could have your website in your computer and it's accessible to you. Anybody that wants to have access to it will be connected to the same network your computer is connected to. And once they're connected, they could easily view the web pages via your IP address. That is a bit more advanced now, but let me just focus on what I have here. We'll still touch that probably in the advanced class. Now a web hosting is a company. What they do is you meet them for web day we have web hosting companies and what they do is you have a website already. You pay and they will give you a portion of space. Like you have your computer and then you have your hard disk and probably if you have a hard disk of 500 gig then you are allocated a little space say 250 gigabytes I'm giving an example so in that 250 gigabytes of course bandwidth limit of course is also added then with that 250 gigabytes you could then host your website there hosting your website means uploading the content of the website, the web pages, all of them into that particular host and then point it to your domain name so that whenever your domain name is searched, the supercomputer that is on 24 7 will then notice that somebody has accessed your domain, then it will pull up everything that you have in your public folder and that has to be your website. So if you have a couple of websites and you are hosting to pull it off, if you have nothing there, that is when you will load some website, you see 404 error or 405 error, meaning that something is missing. So now, a web hosting, it has a lot of things. It comes with email, webmail, webmail are customized email. Like most of us, they have, most of us, they use Android. But I'm sure 90% of the users I have here, they all use Android phones. So for you to have a working Android phone, you must be logged into Google.com with your Gmail account. So now that Gmail is an email address. Please, I want you to understand the difference between Gmail and email. I have a lot of people mixing the two up. Email address is an electronic mail. That means I sent you a message on via electronics. So it's via the internet and you got it. That is an electronic mail. Then Gmail is the Google mail. It's an example of an email. We have a lot of email. We have Gmail, we have Yahoo mail, we have Hotmail, Live mail, Outlook. They're all mail. Now, this also, the web hosting company gives you the ability to have your own custom email. For instance, if you meet somebody working in a bank, <coughs> and probably the name is Henry, Henry Smith, for instance, or Henry Cafe, and then he's working in GT Bank, and GT Bank's website is gtworld.com you might see that the person's email will be henry.okafo or henry.smith <coughs> or henry at gtworld.com and then you'll be wondering ah why is it not gmail or yahoo mail it is because it is a custom web mail 
so when you have a very good hosting most hosting the, the least amount of packages they have comes with at least 100 webmail some has a thousand then for advanced hosting you could get unlimited host so if it is a school or a church you could set it up in such a way that whenever somebody signs up by registering your church you automatically give the person an email address a webmail address pointing to your church and it's very wonderful then we have softwares yes we have a lot of softwares like wordpress can be installed there you could have local php other softwares then files files are the ones that you're supposed to upload that is if you have built your website offline and you want to then bring it on to the internet then you could upload the files and of course the websites most hosting companies have the ability to host more than one website at a time so with this it means that you can have as many domains for instance <coughs> you could have facebook.com google.com twitter.com instagram.com all of them hosted in the same company so you can also the difference between web hosting and a domain name a domain name is something that will make you unique when i want to search for you over the internet i will look for chukwemeka.com and it will point me to no other person but that particular person I'm going to but then if chukwemeka.com doesn't have a web hosting when I search chukwemeka.com nothing pops up I won't see his website because why he has a name on the internet yes I can find him on the internet but he has no content on the internet so you see that the two goes hand in hand you can't have one without the other you can't have a web hosting without a name that you want to point it to and you can't have a name without having a web hosting where you upload the files that you want the name to point to. Then we have the databases, of course, the servers, and then we can have backup for most web hosting companies. So now that brings me to the purpose of the website. Why do we need websites? Why do we build websites? Now, there are lots and lots of reasons. You yourself, you have a reason why you want to learn to build websites. Probably because you don't want to just make money from it. You want to actually build websites for yourself. So now we have branding, so building and growing a brand. Brands or business with a website have higher chance of winning new customers, of course. <coughs> in this 21st century, it's very, very difficult in this modern age to find a very booming business that doesn't have a website the beauty of a website is that because it is on the net on the internet the whole world has access to it anybody anytime anywhere could access your website at any given time once they have they are connected to the internet so you see that with web hosting and with the website it will actually help bring you to new customers to your website then promoting a business a website is the cornerstone of all internet marketing activities yes if you have a business for instance and then you want you don't actually have a website probably you could go meet a good website owner like somebody like Lindy Keji she's one of the not one of them she's the most highly play, paid blogger in Nigeria as a whole and the way she gets her money, because sometimes we mix it up, I've had a lot of persons asking me a question. Victor, I want to open a YouTube page, a channel, or a website, and then I start making money instantly. And probably when somebody comes into the website, MTN will pay me. No, my brother, MTN doesn't pay you a dime. In fact, nobody actually pays you. You could have a website online for years, and then have a, a minimum of... Ten. 1,000 persons coming into the website and you still earn nothing from the website. You actually earn a lot of ways. There are affiliate marketing, then there are ads. Advertisement is the highest way people earn on, over the internet. In the sense that you could be promoting people's businesses for them. Someone like Lindy Keji, she does that. I was saying something about her before I went into this. What she does is she has a very good blog where she talks about a lot of things and then the things she say she has she talks about a lot of things 
sorry, I skipped the slide I was supposed to be talking about. Yes, I did. Okay, she talks about a lot of things, politics, gossip, and all that. Then, because she has a lot of viewers coming into her website, a lot of traffic, a lot of businesses go there to promote their brands, and of course their business. They go there, they pay her, then she will run an advert for them. So you see that with the aid of the website, you could actually reach more customers then attracts and reach new people customers and business to partners yes we already covered that it's the almost one thing promoting a business and brand turn visitors into prospects yes the same thing with that with the visitors you could actually get money because when you have a, a, a site a website with huge traffic you could then request for a lot of adverts Advert and ad management companies. You have Google Ads, Mob Ads, there are a lot of companies out there. When you have very good traffic and good content, and then you have good returning visitors, then you could request for adverts. And then actually, you visit, that is when your visitors actually start paying you. For D, the visitors don't actually pay you. It's Google or the site that you see the ad that actually pays you. So then there are other reasons why you build a website because you have a reason why you want to build a website. I most times build a website for fun, for the fun of it. So now, how are websites made? We have a lot of ways you can build a website. We have coding, we have using website builders, and then we have using content management system. Now, I'm going to talk about this a bit. When we talk about coding, coding is writing the whole code. There are lots of languages out there. And of course, you must have an idea of HTML, which is the markup language. For what we use. Then we have JavaScript, we have PHP, we have Python, we have C Sharp, we have, yeah, there are lots of languages out there that you could use to program. Now, the, the good thing about knowing coding, writing the code yourself, is that with coding you are limitless. You could build any website. In fact, the other two ways to build a website are way a little bit limited, not a little bit, they are limited to building some specific websites compared to writing the raw code. With the raw code, you could actually get things done. Like using website building, using content management system is like building a system. Okay, probably you want to build a house, then you go, you meet an, an architect, and then he draws, he gives you a drawing of the house, you give it to an engineer, then he starts building. Now the engineer is building exactly what he saw, what is drawn. We can't go astray or contrary to what is drawn. He's limited to what that person drew. I'm just giving an example. I know that in most cases, most engineers, of course, always improvise, but let's just understand it that way. He's doing exactly what the architect says, even if he feels otherwise or probably wants something else. But then coding, writing the code yourself means that you are the architect, you are the engineer, they are not different persons, or rather you are an engineer that doesn't want an architect, you want to build a house for yourself. So you start from the ground, from the foundation, you build it the way you want, you place everything where you want. Okay, another example could be having uh, interior decorators de uh, decorate your house and you being an interior decorator and decorating the house yourself. So the interior decorator will follow the rules they have that the TV should be placed here and the table here or there. But you, you want, you build everything, you design it, you do it the way you want from scratch, touching every little detail. So I think that is a better example of the difference between using a code and using either a content management system or a website code. So, but the disadvantage of coding is that it is very, very much expensive. Like an average web developer that writes code doesn't uh, doesn't charge into like seventy to hundred thousand naira depending on the website you want and it can go as far as one million naira, one point five million naira. Yes. So that is how huge it is. I know I've done sites for three hundred K or four hundred K most times. So now another thing it is time consuming. The time I'll spend writing code to build one website. If I'm using a content management system I could build like five to six websites and very very functional so and another thing is that coding is quite difficult to learn and manage in the long run maintain these two maintaining a content management system and then 
a website that is built with web website builders it's easier to maintain than that of the coding because in the coding remember it's you you built the house yourself you didn't draw any plans you just built it by yourself so because you're not the person that built it the person doesn't know don't understand probably the way the person codes so you know the same way you could like if you meet two php programmers and they design a particular website i bet you when you look at their code if you print 10 php programmers all of them won't have exactly the same thing but then the outcome will still be the same thing when you look at the web pages it will all do the same thing but when you check their codes you see that none of them are the same that is how how large and how wide the language is so that is that about coding and we want to be doing most of it in this video likewise using website builders website builders when you meet a good hosting company most times they have website builders installed on them and so it's just a drag and drop event or the main thing you do is you drag this you drop it there it's easy it's fast but it has a lot of limitations you can't build dynamic websites or possibly websites with a lot of functionalities it has a lot of limitations i don't normally recommend it for building a website so now the easiest and the best so far is using content management system now content management system is a website that has been built but then it has the ability to take in layouts in the form of themes and templates so that when you feed it a template it changes the layout the settings and the behavior of the website to suit you and then the sweetest part of it is that you don't even have to know how to write a single code you write zero code and yet you could build anything you want you could get a social network like you could have your own facebook without knowing code you could have an e-commerce website that is a website where you're in an electronic store where you sell things online take payments ship and people get it everything without writing a simple code and that is what we're going to do today we're going to look at using content management system because it is easy and fast to build and manage it's easy to extend functionalities and best for businesses so then there are a lot of content management systems out there we have wix we have wordpress a lot of them if you google it you get so much but then i want to focus on wordpress why because wordpress is an open source content management system content management system sorry open source in the sense that it is free and it is also very easy no coding required and beautiful of course websites in that wordpress has 29 percent of the websites that are available on the internet today big websites run on wordpress like a lot of news sites i think either cnn or bbc runs on wordpress so you could imagine that it's a very huge it's a very huge content management system so it's a question of you knowing what you want to do another thing is that WordPress is quick to launch, very scalable and dynamic. Of course, unlike the web uh, builder that I told you about, it's not dynamic in the sense that when things happen, it doesn't adapt, it doesn't grow. For instance, I could have something on a particular part of the page, like let's say this particular place, let's, let me assume that this is a web page now, and this particular place now, I have this. Then I go into the admin panel and I type something else. Then when you come back here, you notice that it changes. The change is reflected. That is being dynamic. So you don't it's not static. You don't have to. It's not a one one page. You just come, you read it, you go and it stays like that forever. No. Activities are allowed to be carrying carried out on it. So that is what we mean by aside being dynamic. And then you own your data. Yes. With WordPress everything is limited to you it is not a question of having a web builder wherein everything is just drag and drop you have the content and everything already set out for you no here everything is yours so now it is seo friendly and integrates easily with social media and other services we'll talk about seo 
that is search engine optimization that is bringing your site making your site easily available on search engines like google you know when you search something on google you notice that there are websites that pop up on the first page of google now when you build a website imagine you have a billion website out there and then you build another website and then you search something on google and you expect yourself to come up first second or third on that page so it's close to impossible except you have SEO management tools and luckily for us WordPress is SEO friendly so search engine optimization and it integrates easily with social media and other services we'll still think about looking to all that then it is 100% responsive now when, when we talk about something being responsive I'm sorry I, ha I don't have a lot videos or a lot of practical examples in all this because i want to just touch this theoretical aspect then by the next video we go fully in to the practical aspect yes i don't even like theory a lot i'm not much of a theory guy so i'll just glance through all this and i'll also give you an assignment to actually google all this because there will be questions in the page after the video so for something for a website to be responsive is for a website to actually change behavior to actually adapt to the screen of a device that is when you view that website on a desktop it will have a unique view but then when you bring a tablet you notice that the views changed like probably you have three boxes in the front of the website like let's say for instance this very image as when I had this image one and one here and one here too. that is this logo assuming it were three and then when i go to the desktop site i'll see one here another one here and then another one here but when i switch to the tablet view i will see one two and probably the third one down here then when i bring my phone my mobile phone and go to the mobile phone i'll see it aligned one two three down straight so that is being responsive the screen or rather the website adjusts itself to suit the screen of the device that you're working with it is something that you don't see in, you see in most good websites like whenever i go into a website and it is not responsive i don't actually work on that website in fact it's hard for me to work on a website that is not mobile responsive so another thing is that wordpress has a huge global community when you talk about open source content management system, I think WordPress is the highest in the global community. In the sense that it has a lot of people developing and developing new plugins for WordPress, new teams will talk about all that later. And again, people using WordPress, a lot of people coming together in the community and then sharing ideas. At the end of this program, of course, you should be able to join the community and then post your own ideas if you have a problem just it there and then you see people that have similar problem just like this group we have here I expect probably if anybody has issues on the website that's when you easily say I have this problem here I have this problem here and then we solve it together so having said that the last thing we do probably in our next video will be differentiating between wordpress.org and wordpress.com these two sites are owned by WordPress, but then the two of them they are they have different functionalities. So by our next video, we we'll get to keep that. So once again, I'm your host Dr. Ozuna. Thank you very much, and please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, this course is this crash course is free of charge and the best. And the only way you could pay me is by subscribing to this channel. So, thank you very much. I hope you see you in the next video. God bless you.